Hey, Space.com, say hi to Drew Feustel. He's a Hubble telescope maintainer and a space station constructor. And standing today in front of NASA's next generation space exploration vehicle, the Orion. So let's start with that. You know, it occurs to me that you grew up in Lake Orion, Michigan. Yeah, you know, it's, uh, we pronounced it at the time Lake Orion, and uh, I'll do one better than that. Mm -hmm. The neighborhood that I lived in, in a place called Keatington, Michigan, uh, every street in that, in that area was named after different space programs. So I lived on Saturn Drive. The street nearby was Gemini Drive. We had Mercury, we had Armstrong. And I only realized this um, about a few years after sort of thinking I was going to get involved in the space program, it sort of dawned on me that my whole neighborhood that I lived in had a space theme. So, Is there a yeah, Forestal Street yet? Not yet, not yet, Come but on, I, I guess Drew. you could say there was, uh, there was some uh, you know, future uh, prediction there with the neighborhood I lived in and, and what I'm working at now. So. Gotcha. Well, let's talk about Orion, Orion. Okay. Well, those of us who grew up looking at Apollo capsules seem to think that this is pretty big, yeah. right? But compared to shuttle, compared to shuttle with a space lab in the bay or space station, yeah. pretty cramped quarters for going out to asteroids, the moon, and even Mars. How do you think uh, astronauts will perform together in little volume like this? Well, if you compare this to what uh, Mercury and Gemini were, and even Apollo, this is, is pretty roomy. Um, shuttle, although the physical structure was quite large, you know, most of that is payload based, so the living quarters um, wasn't that big. And uh, of course, Soyuz, which we use to get to the space station, is um, pretty cramped as well. So to me, looking at this, um, I think it's pretty roomy. And uh, it's nice because it can accommodate either additional individuals or more equipment. And we're going to need you know, more, more of each of those than we would be afforded in, in like the Apollo capsule just didn't have the room for what we would need for long duration exploration missions. So, and of course, we believe that if we flew this spacecraft, we would have a habitation module um, going to wherever it is we're going with us, and that would afford us a lot more room to work in and uh, sort of get out and stretch and, and get ready for the surface operations wherever we're going. Gotcha. So this is the Jeep, and then there's the special purpose vehicles or I, habitation volume, whatever you need. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, and of course, uh, we would hope to have a rover with us as well so that we have some surface mobility once we get there. So this is just one piece of the puzzle. This is really the piece that sits on the pointy end of the spear to get the crew to space assemble what we need, the rest of the vehicle, and then and then take it on out to a distant uh, location. And get back home in a screaming re-entry from, let's say, a Mars kind of... Orbit. Yeah, getting back home is important. So that's yeah. a key aspect, and we you know, intend to ride this uh, spacecraft back as well, make it a two-way trip. Indeed. So you're also a geologist. Yep. So true. let me ask you about uh, space geology. Before we get to Mars, what do you think about some of these plans that we hear to mine asteroids for their volatiles, mine mm -hmm. the south pole of the moon, crack apart water, and then some of the higher order metals we can get out of that stuff. Should we be doing that? I think we should be doing that. I'm all for it. And, uh, you know, I, as, as a geoscientist, as a student of geology, we had a, some t-shirts made, uh, and on the back of the t-shirts said, Earth first, we'll mine the other planets later. <laughs> and um, not that I believe that we should ex exploit the Earth and really damage it. In fact, as we know, our climate is changing. Um, and then we have some challenges related to human, inter, you know, human effects, and, and also we're terraforming the, Earth. Well, and, and natural cycles of Earth as well. I mean, the, we've only lived through a very small par portion of Earth's history, and it has undergone significant changes throughout its lifetime. So, um, is some of it caused by us? Sure. Is some of it accelerated by us? Sure. But Earth has its own history as well. Um, that is, it is not really um, um, very hospitable for humans to live on. So, um, you know. Learning about what the Earth's history was when we go to these other planets, learning about what, what the history of those planets were is going to be important as we you know, think about exploration. And I think utilizing the resources once we get there, asteroids, Mars, the Moon, whatever those can be, I think that's critical to supporting life, continuing to support life here for humans. And wherever we are, we're going to need those natural resources. Well, let's take the next step. Exploration is one thing. Then there's settlement. Mm -hmm. Why is it important for us to settle the solar system? Um, or is it, in your mind? I think it's important for us to learn to live off of this planet. Um, I think single planet species, in the words of John Young, single planet species don't last forever. The dinosaurs were a perfect example of that. Um, our Earth is five billion years old. We've been here for maybe a million or something like that, a humanoid, you know, human uh, species. So 
we don't have a lot of history here and we probably don't have a lot of a future here either and I don't it's not doom and gloom but it's just the reality of what you know, the world that we live on and the last question for you Drew so we did Apollo as the classic flags and footprints mission yeah. we went we did something we came home we didn't go back how do we all who are enthusiastic about this stuff ensure that that isn't going to happen again at Mars? Uh, we do that by hoping that uh, Congress and the administration and our government decides on long-term planning without changing focus and direction. That's really what we need to hope for. Great. Drew yeah. Foistel, great to talk yeah. with you. Thanks. Thanks for your time. And for Space.com, I'm Dave Brody. Space.com.